God said, praise, praise the Lord. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet have been standing within thy gates. Oh, Jerusalem. I greet all of you this morning in the awesome and master's name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is, was, and will ever be. To those of you who are present here in the sanctuary and for the various components who work so diligently that allows us to bring this broadcast possible, our music ministry, the various other components, stewards, trustees, stewardesses, we thank you. And for those of you who have shared in special ways this morning, I thank you for my alma bearer this morning, Reverend Latia Sweet. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Eternal and all wise God, our Father, it's me. It's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. My Father, it's preaching time. I have not anything to say, but you have much to say to and through me. So I ask, O oh God, that the words of my mouth, meditations of my heart, be found acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, you are my rock and my redeemer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Like a ship is tossed and driven, battered by an angry sea. When the storms of life are raging and the fury falls on me, I wonder what have I done? That makes my race so hard to run. Then I say to my soul, Don't worry, the Lord will make a way somehow. Try to do my best in service, try to live the best that I can. When I seem to do the right things, evil's present on every hand. I look up and wonder why. Good fortune always passed me by. Then I say to my soul, don't worry. The Lord will make a way somehow. Oh, the Lord will make a way somehow. When beneath the cross I bow, He will take away each sorrow. Let Him have your burdens now. Oh, when the load bows down so heavy, the weight is shown upon my brow. There's sweet relief in knowing that the Lord will make a way somehow. Oh, the Lord will make a way somehow. When beneath the cross I bow, He will take away each sorrow. Let Him have your burdens now. Oh, when the load bows down so heavy, the weight is shown upon my brow. There's sweet relief. In knowing that the Lord will make a way somehow. We have to continue to tell ourselves that. That amid all that we are going through, God will in his own time and his own way 
make a way somehow. This morning, as was read in your hearing our gospel lesson, as recorded by St. Luke, the ninth chapter, and I want to read again verses 32 to 34, 30, 32 to 36, pardon me. Peter and his companions were very sleepy. But when they became fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men standing with him. And as the men were leaving Jesus, Peter said to him, Master, it's good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters or three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what he was saying. And while he was speaking, a cloud appeared and covered them, and they were afraid. And they entered the cloud, and a voice came from the cloud saying, this is my son, whom I have chosen, King James would say, whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. And when the voice had spoken, they found that Jesus was alone. And the disciples kept this to themselves and did not tell anyone. I want to use this morning for my subject from which to preach. It's good to be here. It's, it's good to be here on last evening. The missus and I are shared in celebrating a milestone in the life of one of the family members, one of the members of our home church in Annapolis and Mount Olive, Mrs. Pearl Swan, who is also uh, the mother of Reverend Dana Swan. On Wednesday past, she was blessed uh, to celebrate 100 years of life. And uh, she is about the fifth person that I've been blessed to have known to have lived at least the age of 100. And in her commentary, of course, she expressed her appreciation and her gratitude for members of her family and extended family in going to such lifts in enabling her to celebrate such a significant period in her life. And, and she said that, uh, and I'm paraphrasing, she said that I thank God that he has allowed me to live this long. God has been good to me. Uh, beloved, this morning, uh, we began to celebrate the most significant period in the Christian church, the season of Lent, where we begin this journey of 40 days following Jesus from this point wherein we find him this morning, where he is on a Mount Table and wherein he will experience what is commonly called Transfiguration Sunday. It, it signifies, it commemorates a significant period in the ministry of Jesus Christ. Jesus is at 30 and three years of age, and the last three of which he had taken under his wings, 12 individuals whose task it would be to continue on teaching and preaching after he himself had returned to his father. In this chapter, Jesus had sent the disciples out two by two, and he had fed the multitude, 5,000 to be exact, just men and women, not counting women and children. And Peter had declared that Jesus was the Messiah, and Jesus had predicted his death, and now we find Jesus at Mount Tabor being transfigured. Transfiguration is where Jesus would experience a complete change, both physically and spiritually. And from the content of this passage, we begin to get a sense of the enormous weight that was upon Jesus, the son given him by his father to bear the sins of the world that we one day could live with him. Beloved, this is another of the familiar texts. And as always, it is my challenge to discover something new in a familiar scripture. And so this morning, with your prayer, I want to look at this text from a different lens with the intent of wanting to gain better understanding of getting a better sense, a, be a greater feel of what Jesus went through in the Garden of Gethsemane. And the first observation I want to note, we are reminded in this passage of the value of the importance of prayer. Among the attributes, among the character traits of Christ, uh, among the lesson in which Jesus taught his followers is the importance of prayer. For prayer in the life of Christ was the foundation of his ministry. It was 
his custom to find areas that were free of distraction where he could be in communion with his father and his father in communion with him. Whether on a mountain or in a desolate place, Jesus understood the importance of prayer. In Luke 3.21, when all the people were baptized, Jesus was also baptized. And while he was praying, heaven opened. Matthew 14.33, and he sent the crowds away. He went up to the mountain by himself to pray. And when it was evening, he was alone in Luke 8 and 12. It was at this time that he went off to the mountain to pray, and he spent the whole night in prayer to God. Mark 1, 35, early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, went away to a secluded place, and was praying. Jesus understood the value, the importance of prayer. There are no fewer then 38 recordings showing where Jesus is engaged in the posture of prayer. And therefore, beloved, it should come as no surprise at this most crucial period in his ministry, we find Jesus praying communing with his father, where he could share his innermost thoughts. He could, he could talk about that which weighed heavenly upon him. And when we consider everything uh, that he had to endure, have you ever wondered, have you ever pondered and given thought to all that Jesus had to endure uh, on our behalf, his attempts of challenging his divinity, challenging his authority, in whose, by whose authority are you doing what you're doing? It is no wonder Jesus prayed. The Bible teaches us the importance of prayer. Psalm 102 and 16 and 70, for the Lord will reveal Zion and, 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 and he has appeared in his glory. He will turn toward the prayer of the destitute. He will not despise prayer. Proverbs 15, 29, the Lord is far from the wicked, but he hears the prayers of the righteous. We were seeing during Black History Month, way down yonder, by myself, and I couldn't hear nobody pray. Prayer is the key to the kingdom. There are so many efforts, so many attempts, beloved, that are being made today to navigate us through this battery of things that we are experiencing on a, on a daily basis. But I submit to you, it's going to take prayer. For the Bible says that the, 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 the prayers of the righteous availeth much. I could hear grandmother would say to her friends as they would leave home, those of you who know the worth, the value, the power of prayer, pray my strength in the Lord. As people of faith and the stories of our struggle, our experiences, we know the power of prayer. We understand that prayer is a discipline. That it is not something that one merely resorts to when we find ourselves in moments of trial and trouble. Not only those times when we feel as if we are wedged between a rock and a weary land. Uh, 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 but we must learn that prayer is a discipline. It is to be a standard part of our devotion. And so, beloved as Jesus is being about to be transfigured, the Bible tells us that Jesus prayed, and therefore should we. Now, as many times as I've, I've read this text, uh, uh, I, I, I wondered on this time in my prep for this, this sermon, why those three? Why, why, why was it that Jesus selected Peter, James, and, and John to accompany him uh, on Mount Tabor. Have you ever wondered, by that, wondered about that? Because the Bible tells us that they were 12 disciples, but it was Peter, James, and John uh, who were, in fact, uh, uh, given the invitation uh, to accompany Jesus as he was about to be transfigured. Now, uh, 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 as I grew in my faith journey and 
and, and, and doing research over the course of my life, I, as I became more spiritually mature, uh, uh, I, I discovered that, that numbers uh, have great symbolic importance in scripture. And, and, and the number three is among those that are more prominent in the Holy Writ. The number three tends to emphasize unity and harmony. That, that sometimes it is used to symbolize the intensity of something. Wherein we find sometimes there are certain things in which Jesus repeated himself. Like holy, holy, holy. There are several times that Jesus use the phrase more than once when John 21, 15, and 17, Jesus repeats the phrase in his dialogue with Peter. He, he says to Peter, not once, not twice, but three times, he asked Peter the same question. And each time he asked Peter the question, Jesus was more intent in what he was asking. He said, Peter, do you love me? And each time Peter said, Lord, you know I love you. Jesus asked Peter a second time, Peter, do you love me? And Peter said, Lord, you know I love you. And then finally, Jesus asked Peter, Peter, do you love me? And Peter said, Lord, you know I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Three, the patriarchs, Matthew 22 and 33, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Trinity, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Then, of course, we remember that on it was on the third day, on day three, that God raised Jesus from the dead. Numbers have great biblical significance in Scripture. In fact, the number three is repeated no fewer than 467 times in Scripture. Intensity. And harmony. And then, in looking at the text, I realized that Peter, James, and John had emerged as those that were called as a part of the inner circle. Now, let me put this in proper context. Jesus had 12 disciples. Jesus loved them equally. We, we know that because he chose them. He prayed about them before he made a decision to choose them, but it was something about Peter, James, and John. As you read the Gospels of Christ, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you will discover that at the most critical and challenging periods of the life of Christ, Peter, James, and John were with him. Jesus asked these three to accompany him that they might provide some measure of, uh, of encouragement. They, Jesus wanted company. He, he wanted to feel their support uh, as he was talking with his daddy and, and, and because he knew that these were among the remaining days, the remaining weeks that he would be in their presence on earth. And so he asked those who had extended themselves in such a way to keep him company while he was talking to his daddy. Now, now I want you to understand, yes, yes, God, Jesus is the son of God. But Jesus, you must remember, had taken on human form for our benefit. And therefore, he experienced the same challenges, the same emotions that we experienced. And so Jesus invited those who had extended themselves closest to him, Peter, James and, James, and John, to be with him on Mount Tabor. Now, uh, because they had extended themselves in such a way, unlike the remaining nine, beloved, this also shows us this morning that there are periods in our own lives when we are going to God in prayer. And, and, and every now and then we may be tempted, we may, we may be inclined, Today, I think they call them prayer partners, to reach out to a prayer partner. And we will ask someone to partner with you in prayer while you are communing with God. Now, we must like Jesus. Jesus invited them to accompany him, to provide encouragement and support. Jesus didn't ask them to say anything. And, and, and sometimes, beloved, that's important. You know, sometimes we, we, we find it necessary. We feel that when we're in the presence of people and they're going through challenges and difficulties, sometimes we feel it is necessary or that it is incumbent of us to say something. But here we're able to learn, no, you don't have to say anything. But it is what we call today, it is the ministry of presence. In other words, just being there when someone is communing with God 
says a lot and means a lot. And so here they were, Peter, James, and John, with Jesus on Mount Table, and Jesus is communing with his father. And all Jesus has said to them when he extended the invitation, sit with me for one hour. But it became too overwhelming for the brothers. And, and, and I found it interesting because the book tells us not one, not two, but all three of them fell asleep. And, and I wondered to myself, could not at least one have remained awake while Jesus was praying to his father? Well, beloved, it's the same way today. Sometime when you find yourself uh, uh, in need of prayer and you are communing with your father, you want, you want some company. You don't want anyone to say anything, but just being able to have someone in your same space, knowing that that which you are about to undertake as Jesus did, you are not have, you, you're not bearing it by yourself. You just want some moral support. You want someone who is like-minded and of the same spirit to be with you when you're going through. I read the other day, I, I read the other day, a quote, it, it, it said this, when, when, when it rains in someone's life, don't be a broadcaster, but be an umbrella. Um, on this point, you, when, if you are so inclined, when you are about to commune with God, uh, to invite others to partner with you, you got to be careful of who you ask. You can't, you can't tell everybody your business. Hello, somebody. You, 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 you know, again, as I said, you want, you want to invite people who know the power of prayer, people who can relate that which you are going through. And so Jesus invited these three, the inner circle, Peter, James, and John. Oh, beloved, to be in the company, to be in the presence of, of God and 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 beloved, it is beyond description. We we don't now now we don't have the benefit. We don't we don't have the luxury of knowing the content of Jesus' prayer. The book tells us that at some point that company joined Jesus, Moses and Elijah, um, Elijah for the prophets and Moses for representing the law and. And, and I, I would have loved to have uh, been able to hear, been able to have, to have known of the content of, 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 of that dialogue. In fact, it may not have been any dialogue. It may have merely been the appearance of Moses and, and, and Joshua, was a, Moses and Elijah, to reassure Jesus that that which was ahead of him, the arrest, the betrayal, the cross, that it would be all right. And, and so it is, beloved. Every now and then, you and I will have a transfiguration experience wherein after we have prayed to God and God has acknowledged that our prayer has been registered with him and that he, he, that he has not allowed us to be by ourselves in fending for that which is ahead of us. We experience, metaphorically speaking, a kind of transformation when we find ourselves in the presence of God. Because, beloved, it is impossible to remain the same when you are in the presence of God. Grandma would say, I looked at my hands and my hands were new. I looked at my feet and they did too. Ever since that day, my soul's been satisfied. And so if you are so inclined to invite people to partner you in prayer, be careful of whom it is you must invite. And finally, after having engaged in the posture of prayer, we must listen for the voice of God. There, there are a lot of voices that are talking today. You know, and if I could buy, buy from the epistle of James Brown, many other voices are talking loud, but they ain't saying nothing. We, after we have been in the posture of prayer, we must listen for the voice of God. And, 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 and scripture tells us that God is limitless in the manner in which he speaks. 
You know, there are no boundaries. There are no parameters as it relates to the way in which God speaks. Sometimes God speaks to us through the wind and the rain and the lightning and the thunder. Every now and then, God speaks to us through a still, small voice telling us to be still. I got this. Don't sweat the small stuff. It's going to be all right. I know what the forecasters are saying. I know what the naysayers are saying. But I got this. All I want you to do is to remain faithful, to continue to remain, to keep your trust in me. I want to reassure you that I didn't bring you all this way to abandon you right now. I don't care what the hell hounds might be are trying to do in your life. I don't care what the naysayers are doing. You are my child, and I'm going to take care of you. The other day when I was... Going through my exercise regimen, and uh, and I enjoy that, and uh, it's it's interesting because you have to experience pain in order for it to benefit you. Now that's a that may sound like an oxymoron, you know, but you got to experience pain. And I told my I told my trainer, I said, Brother Russ, look at here. I'm not buying. I'm not buying no more shirts. I'm not doing that, you know, because, you know, I never, I, I never regarded myself, Sister Keisha, as one being cut. No, I'm, you know, I'm not, you know, but, but I'm, I'm lifting weights and I'm, I'm, I'm doing, you know, squats and, you know, I'm, 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 I'm doing the rope and all of that. I'm riding the, the bicycle and God knows in heaven when I'm finished, I'm, I'm, I'm tired. I'm wore out. But, but, but I've come to understand, as I said moments ago, that sometimes, in order to achieve a particular objective, sometimes you got to go through some pain. You got to go through some suffering. You got to go through some trials and, and pitfalls. And, but at the end of the journey, you begin to see a change. And I begin to see how my muscles are tightening up and it's becoming increasingly difficult some Sunday mornings. I can't button my collar. You know, but I ain't buying no more shots. Uh, uh, but, but, but the point I want you to understand, beloved, that every now and then, even as we continue to traverse through this COVID period, it doesn't appear as if there's an end in sight. Russ asked me the other day as it relates to much of we are experiencing, not so much as it pertains to COVID, but particularly as it pertains to the social issues that continue to impact our lives. And we, we, we live in a time now, beloved, where in the world is more divided than it has ever been. And he asked me the question, Reverend, do you believe it will ever end? I don't know. I don't know if it will ever end. It might not end until Jesus comes. I don't know. But the fact of the matter is, as we continue to celebrate Black History Month, as I said two Sundays ago, we must follow the spirit and the tradition of our forefathers, that we must engage and utilize all of our powers, all of our resources, and everything that is at our disposal, and to continue to build bridges. I'm not talking about bridges literally, but bridges metaphorically. We must continue to make sacrifices in order that the bridges that we are building we might never cut we, we might never cross them but we're not building them for ourselves we are building them for our grandchildren and our great grandchildren walk together children don't you get weary there's a camp big camp meeting in the promised land god is still on the throne god has not abandoned you god has not left you by yourself just keep on trusting keep on believing and in the time when you least expect, God gonna show up. And not only will God show up, God will show up. The book says, when they looked at Jesus, they saw that his countenance had changed. It reminded me of the encounter when Moses descended from the mountain after having received the, kin, the Ten Commandments. Moses' entire countenance has changed. Beloved, I say to you that when you have had a spiritual encounter with God, it's impossible for you to remain the same. Oh, on the, on the external, you might not look any different. No, your, your hair might not become white as no, but you, on the inside, you will have the courage and the power to run out a little while longer. Come on, 
Come on, somebody. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we know. We, we are accustomed to hard times. We are accustomed to being called everything but a child of God. We are accustomed of knowing how to make do. But I want you to understand that God still has the whole world in his hand. God is going to make the rough places smooth and the crooked places straight. And the glory of God shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together. You can't come in God's presence and remain the same. May the Lord bless you and keep you is my prayer. In Jesus' name. And let the church say, Amen. Oh, we thank God for the preacher, amen. We thank God for the preach word, amen. Yes. Pastor reminded us that we cannot come into the presence of God and remain the same. He said, it's so good that we are here, amen. And I just want to say to someone out there today that it's so good that you're here. Maybe, maybe you just happened to stop past our Zoom today and you're wondering why today, why did I decide to join the service of Union Bethel AME Church in Randallstown today. It's because it's good that you are here because we wanna welcome you into our church family. Maybe you're looking for a church home. We wanna welcome you here at Union Bethel where our motto is we are family. And we're so glad that you stopped by to see us virtually on today. If you wanna join Union Bethel, if you wanna become a member here, we ask, that you would simply dial the church at 410-922-3286 and someone will walk you through the process and we will welcome you with open arms. Maybe, maybe, maybe you're strolling through our Facebook page or maybe you'll catch this later on YouTube and wonder again, why have I stopped right here on this social media platform today? Maybe it's because salvation is an opportunity for you to have salvation today, an opportunity for you to accept the Lord as your personal savior. The pastor said that when you meet Jesus, you'll change, you'll transform. Maybe you've tried it on your own. Maybe you think you've messed up too much to get it right. Well, God wants to transform you today. And all you have to do is open up your heart and say, Lord, I'm a sinner and I wanna be saved and you shall be saved again. If you want salvation, if you want to accept the Lord as your personal savior, we ask that you would dial the church at 410-922-3286. And likewise, if you stand in need of prayer, you may also dial that number and we'll have prayer warriors partnering with you to pray for you. Amen. Thank God again for the blessed preach word. Amen. God be praised. It's good to be here. With each passing day, we look at life in a different lens. Every experience in life is an opportunity for our faith and trust in God to deepen. And that's why every morning when I get up, I say it's good to be here. Earlier in the service, I jumped the gun. It is our custom on the fourth Sunday that we acknowledge and we share birthday greetings with uh, everyone who is celebrating a birthday. And I don't know if they can pull that up or not. If you would devote, direct your attention to the screen, we want to shout out to all of you who are celebrating birthdays in the month of February. Happy, happy birthday to you. 
it's a blessing to celebrate another year in life. And now I'm going to pronounce the benediction, and then we're going to engage in moments of virtual fellowship. It is so good to see so many of your wonderful smiling faces, or your statements of encouragement in our chat. And uh, as Martin said, we have some difficult days ahead, but just remember that God's got it. You continue to be fervent in your prayer, and God will hear and in his own time answer prayer. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious unto you and lift the light of his countenance upon you and give you grace, hope, peace, and joy today, tomorrow, and in the days to come. And remember, it's good to be here. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you.